We delay the start of our scheduled program. We have delayed the start of our scheduled program to bring you a special bulletin from CBS Radio News on the presidential primaries in Nebraska and Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, in the Republican primary, Taft 9,257, Stassen 5,549, Warren 4,510. In the Democratic primary in Wisconsin, Kefauver 3,321, Jerome Fox, uninstructed, 367, Charles Broughton, Truman Draft, 322. In the Nebraska primaries, only 87 votes have been counted. They show Taft and Kefauver leading the Republican and Democratic tickets. But, of course, this is only the first fragmentary count. Stay tuned to CBS Radio for further returns. We now resume our regularly scheduled program. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. Now, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, it's April 1st today in America, and they got a big saying. April showers bring me flowers. Well, with me, April 1st brings a gas, electric, and a telephone bills. <laughs> no, Mama, I wish you could see all the mail I'm got this morning. Besides the bill, I'm got a lot of advertisements, like one card that says, bring this to your grocery. He's going to give you two bars of soap for free. If you give him a 25 cents. <laughs> Oh, yes, there's one more letter I got, which was you know, belong to me, and I'm opened up by mistake. With some letter for my country, Mano Pasquale, and is I had the one dollar inside. As soon as I clean up my antique shop, I'm going to go to Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace and I give him his letter. I don't get it, Pasquale, see? What was the idea of shoving your own letter under this Pasco's door? Lefty, today is April Foolish Day, right? Yeah. Well, there you are. That's it. That little pup squeak always likes to celebrate all the American holidays, so I'm going to let him celebrate April Foolish Day. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was so smart, I should have win me the Putzel Prize. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what do you want me to do? Just to do like I told you, Lefty. Don't ask so many questions. This is going to be the easiest of five bucks you made since the prohibition. No, that ain't... Shh, quiet, quiet. Here comes the little greenhorn now. Uh, you better sit down at one of those tables and don't forget the signal. Okay, okay. Oh, hello, Pasquale. Hello, little banana nose. <laughs> Looking beautiful in this morning, Luigi. Shoes all are shined up, pants are nice and pressed, bow tie, face shining, and long and curly hair just a begging for a poodle a haircut. <laughs> well, Pasquale, I'm, I'm glad you feel so good today. Here, I, I open up one of your letters by mistake. What? Quick, hide the letter. Hurry up. Huh? What's the matter, Pasquale? I'm, I'm a did something wrong. Worse than a wrong, a wronger. Open up for somebody else's a mail is a terrible crime in America. Huh? Violation of the refrigerator law. <laughs> What's this refrigerator law? Using the mails to defrost. <laughs> Are you making a joke? I have my no, time. no, Luigi. I'm just telling you, you should always remember. 
Break somebody's window, pick a fight with a cop, or rob a bank if you wanna, but never touch anybody else's mail. And you know why? Why? Because right away the FBI marks you A W O L. A W O L. What's this mean? Alien. What opens the letters? <laughs> All I did was, was, was make a little mistake. Little mistakes is no yeah. excuse to the law. It's a lucky thing you open my letter, not a stranger's. Now, uh, slip for me the damage and nobody should have seen. I'd like to hear the letter, Pasquale, just like I'm a fan of it. Ah, that's from Mr. Roberts, my steadiest customer. He says, uh, dear Mr. Pasquale, enclose a fine of $50 of cash, which takes care of my spaghetti bill for March. <laughs> $50? Oh, Pasquale, was only one dollar in his side. What? Luigi, I wouldn't mind to defend you on a letter open at a charge, but never stealing the money. In America, it's called arson. Arson? <laughs> yes, and over 25 bucks worth is a worse. That's called larson. <laughs> larson? Of course. Now, uh, I couldn't testify against you if you was to be my daughter's husband. Huh? Well, take your pick, arson, or arson, or a parson. <laughs> oh, Pascal, you, 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 you're just trying to scare me. Nothing wrong is a happening. Nothing wrong is a happening, huh? No. Okay. You hear me? Okay. Oh, uh, pardon me, bud. Huh? Uh, who are you? Well, I just happened to overhear the whole conversation, see? And I happen to be a postal office inspector, see? Postal Officer Inspector C. Uh, don't mind him, Mr. Postal Officer Inspector. By C, he means a yes. I guess he didn't really believe you were a real officer. Well, there it is, right on my driver's license. I'm afraid you're in trouble, bud. Trouble? Well, what do you say now, Mr. Know-it-all? Uh, what kind of trouble is he in, Mr. Officer? And please, be good to him. Well, we give him a choice. Five years or ten years? Five out of ten years. Well, Luigi, go ahead. You win the five and ten. Take your pick. <laughs> Mama mia, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go get advice. Goodbye. Hey, come here. I gotta make a pinch. Pinch to yourself. I'm not gonna go to school. <laughs> Goodbye, Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what an April Foolish joke. <laughs> Lefty, you couldn't act it better if you was at the Labarry Ball. <laughs> hey, here's you five a box. Hey, thanks, Pasquale. Hey, you got that character real scared. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to tell him the whole thing was just an April Fool's joke? <laughs> That's the way it started out, Lefty, but who knows? Maybe that April Fool could turn my daughter into a June bride. Quiet, <laughs> 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 oh, please, class. Please, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howard? Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, hey. Mr. Schultz? I accept the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> And remember my promise, a vote for Schultz in November is a vote for chaos in December. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that will be enough clowning. Ach, smile, Miss Spalding. It's spring. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. Lovers are humming. The whole world is in tune. You may answer the first question, Mr. Toscanini. <laughs> Me and my big mouth. <laughs> we are studying state capitals today, class. And Mr. Schultz, you... Mr. Basco, what's the matter? Well, Miss Spalding, today I'm, I'm opening up a Pasquale's letter by mistake. Was it supposed to be $50 in a side? I'm a found only one. But a Pasquale says, Arsenal, the last one of the person in the post office who wants to pinch me. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmered? <laughs> Believe it or not, Schultz, I understood him. Look, Luigi, anybody can make a mistake once in a while and open up a wrong letter. Yo, oh, that's true, by him, me. Yo, my nephew once opened up a letter and they sent him away for three years. Really? Where was the letter from? His draft board. <laughs> That was a gigantic yoke by him, isn't it? <laughs> Very good, Olsen. Listen to them. Olsen and Horowitz. The United Nations, Martin and Lewis. <laughs> Look, Luigi, I'm sure Pasquale won't make you no trouble. Just forget the whole thing. I think so, too, Mr. Basco. Yeah, but it's a $49 emission from my envelope. Miss Balding, the inspectors are going to make him in trouble. I could tell it the way he's tried to grab him. Luigi, be practical. Even if the post office inspector was there at the time and he did see everything, they can't do a thing to you unless Pasquale wants to prosecute. Yeah, and for a measly $49, Pasquale wouldn't slap you in the cling, will he? Sure, sir. You think he would? Without a doubt. <laughs> 
Pasquale would kill himself if he could only figure out a way to come back and collect the insurance. <laughs> Mamma mia, then, then, I, then I'm in a big trouble. Shame on you, Mr. Schultz, frightening him like that. Ach, smile, Luigi. I was only trying to make a show. Mr. Basco, the whole thing is just a misunderstanding. You talk to Mr. Pasquale after school, tell him the truth. You found only one dollar in the letter. Yeah, but I'm already told him this. Look, Luigi, maybe it dropped out. Did you look all over the store? Yeah, all over. All over. Then you should look again. Leave no stone unturned. That's what they say on the rock pile. <laughs> oh, smile, Luigi. Nothing is going to come from all this. Believe me. Well, sure, so while Inspector was there, Pasquale has looked at me very strict. Like he thought I was a lion. I... I'm afraid that maybe he's going to let him put me in jail. Why, that's ridiculous, Mr. Basco. Look, if you're so worried, why don't you go downtown to the main post office, see the officials there, and explain the whole thing to them? Me? Go, go to the post office? Sure, Luigi. Ten million Americans do it every day to fill their fountain pens. <laughs> that's right. You've got nothing to lose, Luigi. Sure, to be sure. Uh, the truth usually has a way of shining through. That's right, Luigi. Tell him you got the letter. You opened it up by mistake. There was one dollar inside, and that's what you gave for Squally. But it sure so well for the inspector don't believe in me. Well, then you get... Well... Ach, Luigi, stop worrying. We'll visit you in Alcatraz and call the roll every Sunday. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your daily work a little easier and more enjoyable. Chew refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum while you work. You see, chewing on a good, smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint Gum just naturally helps keep you feeling right. It helps relieve that feeling of tension and pressure, gives you comfort and satisfaction. Then, too, Wrigley Spearmint Gum has a lively, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor that freshens your mouth and helps keep your throat moist. Yes, friends, that little stick of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum can be a real help to you while you're working. Try it and see for yourself. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum on the job and see how the pleasant chewing makes your work go smoother and easier. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma me, I'm not going to waste the day of my life in front of me. But before I go down the town to the post office to beg them they should believe me, I'm going to go see Pasquale. Right there now, through the window, I can see he's calling somebody. Rosa! Rosa! Rosa, come out of the kitchen. You called me down first! <laughs> yes, my little Cupid doll. Tell me, Rosa, did uh, Luigi talk to you yet today? Oh! <laughs> oh, what's the matter, Bambino? Oh, Bobby, you should tell Luigi it's an April Fool joke. He feels terrible. <laughs> sure. And when he feels terrible enough, he might decide to marry you. <laughs> Rosa, this whole thing started as an April Foolish joke, but now the whole thing is bigger than both of us, uh, if that's possible. <laughs> Quiet, here he comes now. Go back in the kitchen. Yes, Papa. No, Pasquale, you, you, you gotta believe in me, Pasquale. You gotta. Believe you about what, little cabbage bush? No, Pasquale. Pasquale, you know I didn't take you $49. Sure, Luigi. I know you didn't take the money. How could you? After all, I look at you like my own son. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. Now give me back the money and I drop the charges. <laughs> but, Pasquale, you, you just said Never that... mind what I said. Just listen to me. As far as I'm concerned, I'd be willing to forget the whole thing. But that J. Edgar Hoover is a cracking down on letter openers of this year. Yeah, but, Pasquale, I didn't... Luigi, let me warn you. Don't say anything I might hold against you you in a court. Court? What the court? Who knows? There's lots of courts. You're in the soup, so I guess they're going to take you to the superior court. <laughs> After all, Luigi, that's a terrible, a terrible charge they got against you. Housebreaking into a letter. Pasquale, you don't believe in me. You don't believe in Luigi, nothing. Luigi, believe me. 
I think you innocent even though you're guilty. <laughs> but in the eyes of the law, you are now what is called a habeas corpus. Habeas corpus? That's I mean a half a corpse. <laughs> Mamma, mamma, mia, Pasquale, please. Look, go down to town, talk to this fellow, tell him how you was brought to me to America, and, and you don't think I'm a took your money. Now, is it too late, Luigi? Now you got a choice of three juries. Uh, there's the grand, that's it for people who steal over $1,000. Then there's the blue ribbon of jury, which tries mostly beer cases. And, <laughs> and then, then, Luigi, they got the hung jury. Hung the jury? Yes, they hang you first to the try you later. <laughs> oh, no, Pascal, now, now I know you're making a joke of him or the whole thing. You don't care what's happening to me. No, no, don't say that to Luigi. I feel very sorry for you. If I was in your boots now, you know what I'd do? I would go down to Lake Michigan, hire one of those half a dollar an hour rowboats, and aim for Italy. <laughs> <laughs> and a goodbye. Goodbye, my, my, my good friend. Oh, wait, Luigi, come back. Where are you going? To the post office to beg you for my life. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many stamps, sir? No, 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 thanks, sir. I'm, I'm going to talk to the boss. Is he in? Oh, you want the superintendent? Huh? What am I going to do with a janitor? <laughs> the superintendent is in charge of this office, sir. Oh, oh he's, a, he's a the biggest of boss, huh? Well, no, no. Above him, there's the fourth assistant postmaster, and his superior is the third assistant postmaster. Then there's the second assistant postmaster, and above him is the first assistant postmaster. And, uh, and uh, he's the biggest, huh? No, no, no. The top man is the postmaster general. Oh, when they get a too big army, is a draft for them, huh? Uh, <laughs> sir, if you tell me what your problem is, I might be able to direct you. Well, uh, Mister, is, is about a letter. I'm, I'm open up by mistake. Oh, oh, do you have the letter? No, I think maybe the inspector is who took it. What inspector? From the post office. Would well, you know his name? Sure, Mister Lefty. Lefty. Oh. I, I think you want to see the chief inspector, Mister Simmons, sir. He's in room two fourteen upstairs. Oh, thank you, and and I, I'm, I'm going to buy. Three stamps, please. Oh, good, good. What kind? Any kind. Eh? I, I, I don't like it to come into your post office and take up your time without giving you some little business. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Mr. Inspector. Hmm? Can I come inside the office? I, I'm, I'm going to ask you something. All right. What can I do for you, sir? My name is Luigi Basco, and, and I'm coming to tell you about a Pasquale's letter, which I'm opening up by mistake, but there wasn't no $49 in his side. Just a $1 bill with the Mr. Washington is a picture. Believe me, that was all that was in Well, the... let's see if we can't get some facts down. Your name, please? Hi, Luigi Basco. How do you spell that? Luigi Basco, that's a big L and a big B. Everything else is a tiny with a two dots on the top of a I I. Luigi Basco, okay. Address? At 21 in North Hollister Street. Is that Chicago 1? You mean there's a two Chicago? <laughs> I meant the zone number, Mr. Basco. Oh, that's a... That's a number of 22. Oh, now then, Mr. Basco, calm down. Begin at the beginning and tell me the whole story. Well, I'm at the beginning. Pasquale's letter was a coming to me by mistake, and I'm up and up by mistake. And your inspector was a My there. inspector? What was his name? Mr. Lefty. Hmm, the name isn't familiar. Uh, what do you look like? He's, uh, he's a wore a green pants, a checker coat, uh, suede shoes, a big cigar. I think he's a work on a railroad sometimes. <laughs> On the railroad? Yeah, in his hand there was a carry newspaper says uh, tips at the track. <laughs> There's no such inspector working out of this office. Now, Mr. Basco, since the department has already taken steps in your case, I'm afraid my hands are tied. Oh, then please, please, take the ropes off. Please help me. I'm an at the citizen, and I'm not going to want to get into trouble with the government. Uh, Mr. Vasco, I can't do a thing for you. And then maybe you're going to talk to Pasquale, huh? Tell him I'm a didn't take the money. Tell him Mr. that... Mr. Vasco, you're just wasting time now. Mr. Chief, I'm a promise to you. If, if you help me, I'm going to help you back. I'm going to write to my mama three times a day, special delivery, air and mail. You're going to make so much money from me, you're going to retire in one year. <laughs> Mr. Vasco, for the last time, there is nothing I can do for you. Now go home and wait till the department sends for you. 
Yes, Mr. Chief. But don't worry. I'm still going to buy my stamps from you. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. Oh. <laughs> That's my matter, Rosa. You got a toothache? Papa told me you were going to hire a rowboat and row to Italy. And you was, uh, you was uh, worried about me, Rosa? Yeah. It's a half a dollar an hour, and I know you haven't got enough money for the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, I'm in a terrible, terrible trouble. No, Luigi, you're not. Huh? The whole thing's an April Fool's joke. Papa told me. Ep April Fool? You mean, you mean the Pascal said never had a fifty dollars in that? No. Case? Papa slipped the letter under your door. But 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 is that an inspector? That's Lefty from the pool room. Papa gave him five dollars to be an inspector. Mama, 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 yeah. How rusty you done a not, but but you just to give me back America. Oh, Rosie, you, you never was a look so good to me like you look right now. <laughs> and Rosie, Rosie, I'm, I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> and your birthday. <laughs> hey, look, Rosie. Rosie, you want to help me play a little, a, a little joke on your papa? What kind of joke, Luigi? April the full of joke, Rosie. Well, all right, but... Please don't tell Papa I told you. No, don't worry. First time I got to see Chief Inspector, then I'm going to see some of my friends. Then it's going to start all of the fun. Oh, Luigi. What? Are you really going to kiss me on my birthday? When is your birthday, Rosa? Next December. You got my promise. <laughs> Yeah, what's this about Luigi? Yo, did he really run away? What a crazy kid. Read this suicide note he left to me after he died. <laughs> oh, let me see that, Pasquale. Dear Pasquale, you was right. I got it no choice, so I'm going to hire a rowboat and row to Italy. Ah, Yemeni, he is a brave man. Yes, I hope the tide is with him. <laughs> Here, Pasquale, you finish the letter. I ain't got the heart to. All right. <coughs> Friends, don't be too hard with Pasquale. He thinks I really stole his $49. Oh, listen, you stupid letter. I don't think. The whole thing is just a fool joke. What? Pasquale, you have a very stupid, cruel sense of humor. That's right. You <laughs> sent Luigi 5,000 miles in a rowboat. And that's carrying a joke too far. <laughs> Who figured it would take the whole thing so serious? I, I only... Just a plain little April Fool's joke. Schultz, what else did they write? He wrote a P.S. That's a standard for Pasquale. <laughs> P.S. Everything I got in the world, I leave to the best friend I ever had. Pasquale. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, Schultz. That's enough. Read on, Schultz, please, read on. Yo, yo. Read more. <laughs> Wait, I, I gotta wring out my handkerchief. <laughs> Schultz, what's gonna happen with Luigi? Uh, Pasquale, what has got to be has got to be. What? You know, we got the saying in the delicatessen business. If you were born to be a salami, you'll never wind up in the army. <laughs> <laughs> very funny, Schultz, very funny. <laughs> oh, you were on Mr. Yenius with the yolk, Schultz. <laughs> oh, stop it there, you crazy maroons, you. <laughs> How can you stand there and laugh for when Luigi might be floating right now on the bottom of the ocean? Ah, stop tying on so much, Pasquale. It ain't as if Luigi was the last fella in the world for Rosa. That's the trouble, he was. <laughs> I gotta call up with the police department, the fire department. Oh, Pasquale, come here. Let me go. All right. Which one of you is Pasquale? Huh? Who's this? 
Lefty, what do you do with this pile of... Jig is up, Pasquale. I'm what? Chief Inspector Simmons, United States Post Office, and your confederate Lefty here has already confessed and incriminated you. Uh, he's not to criminate to me. I, I didn't do nothing. Mr. Pasquale, it's a criminal offense to use the mails as a medium for practical jokes. That's a lie. I never slipped that ladder under Luigi's door, and I got a 12 witnesses who didn't see me do it. <laughs> It's too bad Luigi ain't here to testify against you, Pasquale. But I am alive. What? In my own way. Uh, 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 who said that? What, 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 who said, said what, Pasquale? Pasquale? Give up, Pasquale. Uh, uh, Tell them how you was killed me. Uh. He's a hair. Who, oh, Pasquale? Ooh, yeah, who? We didn't hear nobody. Luigi. That's the matter. You all deaf? Don't you hear him? Mr. Inspector, you heard him. Mr. Pasquale, it's just your conscience. My, my, my conscience. Oh, no, no, it can't be. Yes, it can be. What? Well, who's the doctor? Hello from Hollywood to all of you. This is the Well of Parsons, my first exclusive. Mr. Pasquale killed Mr. Luigi Bosco. Shame, shame on him. <laughs> Luella Parsons. If she's a no, everybody's a no. All right, take him away, Inspector. I killed him. I killed him. Take him away. Hey, for the fall of Pascal. Luigi. Luigi. You was in the closet all the time. Sure, and I was talking in this empty milk about the like of this, you see? Confess, Pasquale. Confess. Uh, hey. I knew it all the time, Luigi. You never fooled me once. <laughs> Say, well, where's the Luella Parsons? Where's Luella Parsons? Yeah. I'm a no no. Wasn't she in the closet with you? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can tell me. Where is Miss Barson? <laughs> what a show, I'm a no no. I'm, I'm a no even to hear her voice. Can I show this offense in it? <laughs> In just a minute, we'll explain the mystery of Luella Parsons' voice. Friends, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that you'll find Wrigley Spearmint Gum a friendly, helpful companion to take with you wherever you go. At work, in your car, out shopping, no matter where you happen to be, you can slip a stick of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum in your mouth and enjoy some mighty good chewing. Wrigley Spearmint freshens your taste, sweetens your breath, and the chewing action helps keep your teeth clean and bright. So chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint gum from time to time every day. Enjoy that delicious Wrigley Spearmint flavor and enjoy the good smooth chewing. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum and carry a package or two with you wherever you go. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco and Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Jolt, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, now we can clear up the mystery of Miss Luella Parsons' voice. It came from CBS Radio. In fact, right from Luigi's Closet. And we wish to thank her for her appearance in our program tonight. Luella's new program of outstanding Hollywood news starts tonight on CBS Radio, immediately after this program. We hope you'll all stay tuned for the Luella Parsons Program. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>